Let's talk about the large intestine channel of Han Yang Ming, starting from the primary channel. The large intestine primary channel begins at LI1, at the radial side of the tip of the index finger. It goes along the index finger, passes LI4, between the first and second metacarpal bones, and then passes LI5 between the tendons of extensor pollicis longus and brevis. It traverses the lateral aspect of the forearm, passes LI11, and continues to go along the lateral aspect of the upper arm, reaching LI15. It goes around the shoulder, passes SI12 in the center of the suprascapular fossa, and goes to GV14 below the spinous process of the vertebra of C7. From GV14, it enters the supraclavicular fossa, connects with the lungs, passes the diaphragm, and connects with the large intestine. There is a branch that goes along the lateral aspect of the neck, passes the cheek, and then enters the lower gums. The channel passes ST4, curves around the upper lip, passes GV26, crossing to the other side of the face. It continues until it reaches LI20 at the side of the nose and then connects with the stomach channel of foot Yang Ming. The large intestine low connecting channel begins at LI6. At this point, the channel joins the lung channel. It also goes up the arm through LI15 to the jaw and it divides on the cheek, one connecting with the teeth and the other entering the ear. The large intestine divergent channel separates from the hand and goes along the arm, passing LI15. It goes to the spinal column and then to the supraclavicular fossa. It descends to the thorax, breast, lungs, and large intestine. There is a branch from the supraclavicular fossa that goes along the throat and rejoins the large intestine channel. The large intestine sinew channel starts at LI1 and binds at the dorsum of the wrist. It goes along the lateral aspect of the forearm, binds at the elbow, continues along the upper arm, and binds at the shoulder. There is a branch that goes around the scapula and attaches to the upper thoracic spine. From the shoulder, the sinew channel goes up to the neck. There is a branch that goes across the cheek and binds at the side of the nose. The sinew channel continues to ascend, crosses the temple and the corner of the forehead. It further goes up to the top of the head and then connects with the mandible on the opposite side. Here are the key points. The primary channel passes GV26 crossing to the other side of the face. It is the only channel that crosses the midline of the body. All six young channels go to GV14, so does the large intestine primary channel. The primary channel enters the lower gum, and the lower connecting channel connects with the teeth. The lower connecting channel also enters the ear. The primary and divergent channels connect with the lung and large intestine. The divergent channel goes to the spinal column. It also ascends along the throat and descends to the breast. The sinew channel attaches to the upper thoracic spine. It also goes to the corner of the forehead, top of the head, and the mandible on the opposite side. Now let's look at what kind of signs and symptoms manifest when there is a problem with the large intestine primary channel. Runny nose, nose bleeding, toothache, swollen neck, swollen painful throat, dry mouth, red painful eyes. These are signs and symptoms on the head where the Yang Ming channels go. And of course, there can be pain along the course of the channel, such as the lateral aspect of the arm. The large intestine low connecting channel has excess and deficiency syndrome. For excess, signs and symptoms include toothache and deafness. For deficiency, 
Signs and symptoms include sensation of cold in the teeth and obstruction of the diaphragm. Signs and symptoms of the large intestine sinew channel are cramping and pain along the course of the channel, inability to raise the shoulder, and inability to turn the head from one side to the other. Now let's go over some major acupuncture points on this channel. When heat or heat toxin in the large intestine channel often manifests on the face because the young pathogenic factors such as wind or heat attacks the young part of the body such as the head. The large intestine channel traverses the face, so you can see signs and symptoms such as painful throat, toothache of the lower jaw, pain of the lower cheek, runny nose, nose bleeding, swelling of the submandibular region, dry mouth, deafness, and tinnitus. And line 1, 2, 3, and 4 can expel wind and clear heat. Let's talk more about LI4 here, because LI4 is a very important point. It has many actions and clinical applications. As we already talked about, LI4 can treat the swelling or pain in the face region. LI4 can treat disorders of the face and sense organs regardless whether they are acute or chronic, hot or cold, and deficiency or excess. LI4 can release the exterior, meaning it can induce sweating and expel the exterior pathogens, whether wind cold or wind heat. LI4 can not only induce sweating, but also stop sweating. This dual action of LI4 can be understood as the ability to regulate the defensive chi, which can adjust the opening and closing of the pores. The lower connecting point of the large intestine channel is LI6, the large intestine lower connecting channel connects with the lung channel. As we know by now, the large intestine channel is in yin-yang relationship with the lung channel. That is why all these points on the large intestine channel can release the exterior, which is one of the actions of the lungs. In addition to expelling wind function, LR6 can open and regulate the water passages. This is one of the lungs function as well. For instance, wind invasion disrupting the lungs function of regulating the water passages can cause difficult urination or edema with absence of sweating. In this case, LI6 can be used. LI11 regulates the circulation of qi and blood in the limb. So this point is used for both atrophy disorder with immobility and painful obstruction with numbness. For these cases, this point is often used with LI4 and LI15. LI11 is an important point that clears heat because it can clear any kind of heat in the body. Also, since it can expel wind, resolve damp, and clear fire toxin, this point is used for the treatment of the skin disorders of excess type as well. LI20 treats disorders of the nose, such as nasal congestion and discharge. LI20 is the last acupuncture point of the large intestine channel, and this is also a meeting point of the large intestine channel and the stomach channel. So this point can treat the stomach channel disorders, especially problems of the sense organs and the face. If you want to learn more about acupuncture prescriptions according to patterns, please check our blog, the link is in the description. In the next video, we'll learn about the stomach channel of Han Yang Ming.